We are back from Grunplatz here in Amsterdam, the Flanders region, as we have reached the final five games of day number three. This is hump day. As uh, we've seen A and D back in action with the Cathedral of Our Lady overlooking all of our action. Just to the south of that, at this beautiful square. What a venue, what a tournament to this point. And we are not done yet. The outstanding work of painter Peter Paul Rubens, ever present in our video and our beauty shots. Let's finish this day beautifully. The ladies are gonna be up first here. Israel is taking the court. They'll be lacing them up against Spain. Pool D for the ladies coming to a close. We'll have another women's game in this group, Netherlands and Canada. So the ladies will be taking center stage a good bit here down the final stretch. As there's the Israeli quartet. And Spain, who the last time we saw them, they pulled off an overtime thriller over Canada. And they are in the driver's seat. We'll see if they can go unbeaten here on the third day of play. With their star-studded cast that we've seen for so many years now in both the women's series and the national competitions. They got metal on their mind. They're led by Sandra Igueravide, Vega Jimeno, Marta Canea, and Aitana Cuevas. Cuevas right next to Igueravide. That's Jimeno on the far left of your screen. The Spaniards come out in the all red. And obviously the Israelis come out in the all white. Overtime. Overtime? Okay, go. Oh. Coin flip is going down. There's a, you can see who she's cheering for. España. There's Yasmina and Yu Yin out of Chinese Taipei. They will officiate this women's contest for us. And you don't need me to tell you this if, you, if you've been watching 3x3. Spain's the favorite in this, in this game. Okay, there you go, the four seed. Israel, the 11th seed. Israel has struggled, but they did pick up their first win of the tournament against Chile. No, excuse me, they lost to Chile. My bad. They don't have a, a win yet. Spain, all they do is win. 21-15 over Chile. 22-9 over the Netherlands. And 18-16 in OT over Canada. Spain get a win here. They are guaranteed the number one seed and a berth straight in the quarterfinals. They will not have to play in the play-in game. Vega Jimeno and company know the stakes. If they handle business, they'll get to sit and, and get a little bit more rest as they prepare for their quarterfinal. Fans of all ages, the fellas and the ladies, the kiddies and the elderly out here in Antwerp enjoying 3x3 as we've taken over here for the first time ever at the Creelon FIBA 3x3 World Cup 2022. Hello, Kyle Montgomery, aka The Voice. I'm with you, and my voice is still with me. I'm happy. Lemon honey tea is the secret, in case you're wondering. If I get hoarse, that means I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. All right, countdown's over. It's time to get to it. Let's go. Cohen. She's got a distinct size advantage. As I've mentioned many times, she is towering at 196. She is a difficult guard for, and not guard as in the position, but a difficult player to guard. No matter who's in front of her, including Aitana Cuevas or Vega Jimeno, that is not an easy assignment. Haddad making her moves out on the right wing. Quick step to the left. She's hit on the elbow on the way up. Israel and Spain 
meeting for the first time in an international competition. Haddad will take her time at the line. Haddad, 23 years old, she's young. This is a young Israel team. Their eldest member is Cohen at 29. She hasn't even hit 30-30 yet. Meantime for Espana, this is a team chalked with veterans. The 37-year-old Sandra Igueravide, 35-year-old Aitana Cuevas, 31-year-old Vega Jimeno. They've been a unit for quite some time. Igueravide dripping as Spain takes an early lead, 2-1. How about Kanea in that overtime win? That shot that she hit in, at the end of regulation uh, against Canada to send it to OT was incredible. She's not just a role player, don't get it twisted. She's a key cog in the Spaniards' attack. On that attack, a whistle. Um, not a foul, but a, out of bounds. So nine seconds to shoot. And a warning for red is what I'm hearing from official Yasmina. Oh, he get a V-Day. It's a two-peat. She's got the jumper on replay. She's responsible for all of Spain's four points. She's got the thievery. I'll take that. You take this. She's getting twos like Twix with the sweet stroke. Two points for Israel. He get a V-Day. Oh, a narrow miss that time. And at 37, she's still a premier player in this game. Women's Series MVP 2021. Also a Europe Cup gold medalist and MVP. She will get a rest. She deserves one. And she's doing the lion's share of Spain's scoring here in Lions country. Minute and a half in, Kanea. She will loft it inside to Aitana. Cuevas could not get it to go. Israel will clear it. An uphill climb come, going up against a powerhouse in 3x3. They want nothing more than to pull off a big upset. So far, it's been Spain. Day three, it's all about A and D. The teams that we saw play on day one is we're almost, we're past the midway mark. Because tomorrow will be our final day of pool play, B and C. We'll decide uh, who's heading to straight to the quarterfinals and who's heading to the playoff, I mean the play-in games. So we'll know half of that field and we won't know who these teams are gonna be playing until the end of business tomorrow. We got another 20 game slate. Well, actually 18 because the Dominican Republic weren't able to make it, so. That's how things set up for tomorrow. Spain trying to set up a good looking shot. Igueta Vide. She didn't have the connection that time, but Aitana, no worries. She puts it up and in easily. Cohen, two up and two down. She's got a good touch from long range. You look at her size and you assume that she's just gonna dominate on the interior, but versatility is, is key in 3x3. You gotta be able to play every position and you gotta be able to do everything. Well, rebound, pass, defend, and score. You got a V-Day. She's got scoring on her mind, but she shuffled her feet too much. She was doing the cha-cha. Still got the Bel Belgian men on the slate. American men on the slate as well. Netherlands women will try to go unbeaten here day two as they came into the day one and one. Oh, behind the back setup. Can Jimeno finish it? She can. Handles it. Goes off the glass. 9-5 España. Robert 
taking her time as Kanea was down, but they blew the shorty. Got to make the layups. Kimano, she's held up by a foul as Robert got caught reaching in the cookie jars. The TV timeout as we're under seven minutes. Spain, España has shot out of a cannon in this 21 point sprint. Let's listen in. I hope you know Spanish. Whatever uh, Spain is doing, they're doing the right thing. Four point advantage early. Which isn't much, honestly, in 3x3. It could change very quickly. Jimeno could not add to that lead as she bricks the free throw attempt. Robber tries the interior feed, but it's deflected. Iguadavide gives it up quickly. Jimeno likes the shot from the corner. It goes off the front iron. So Israel trying to set something up. That's a step back. That's a one. Didn't count anyway. Red ball. That's off of Cohen. But again, after the miss, and you see Cohen swiping through. Kimana holds her hands up. She didn't do it. Kanea. She's hacked on the way up. She played hero in that last contest against a loaded Canadian team. That was, I think, maybe the best game in the women's competition of the day. So that one had to be decided in overtime. Aitana Cuevas handled the rest of the work in OT, and that one's mishandled by Israel. Out of bounds, back over to the ladies in red. España will take over. Kim Anno will check out. Sandra Igedevide will take over. Somehow that ball finds its way back to Kanea. And Aitana was fouled by Vaturi before the shot on the floor. But that is going to give Israel a fifth foul to go with five points as they trail it by five. Aitana. Bullet pass. What a look. Igedevide blew it. But Aitana is right there to finish the leftovers. Cohen running into some tough defense on the inside. Look at the pass there from Igedevide. She's sneaky. She started off hot, knocked down her first twos, first two twos. She misses that one. And that spin made Cohen a little dizzy. She lost her equilibrium and falls to the ground. Ball falls out of bounds and back over to Espana. Substitution being made. Cohen needs a, a rest. She's been working hard. Our team's got a lot more work to do as they trail it by six. You got a B-Day from the left elbow. Kanea on the move to the paint. Flotation device activated. 12-5 Spain. That ball is stolen. You got a V-Day. She's a smooth criminal. You know, I've been waiting to say that. Y'all having fun? I hope so. It has been a fun third day of play as, ooh, Jimeno, she had that halfway down. Nice play over to Cuevas, who makes easy work of the layup. Spain within eight points of putting this one away. Opatori oh, doing her dance, steps through. Nice play working on Cuevas. Vaturi's got some skill with when she puts that ball on the Enlio. Offensive foul, White. So on goes the Spaniards. You get a V day looking to get her stroke back. Not quite. Yeah. 
seven point lead for España as they look to remain unbeaten. They got a great shot to take that number one seed out of Pool D. I think their biggest competition is already taken care of as they beat Canada. Netherlands, also usually a tough competitor, but Spain already got past them, so all they got to do is get past these Israelis, which Israelis, and it's looking to be a fairly easy task as they've extended their lead now to eight. Their lead is swelling like a bee sting. 14-6. Can Israel stop the bleeding? Haddad, dribble drive. She picks up her dribble and forces up a desperation heave late in the shot clock. They got to figure some things out defensively. How do they stop España's offensive attack? They've seen Iguerevide go a little bit cold. They haven't had to deal too much with Aitana. It's a pick your poison type Spain team. One game, it could be Iguerevide giving you work. It could be, oh, Kanea. That's a no look worth seeing again. Dime time. 15-9. Mid-range shot goes. That was a Russell Westbrook side of the backboard. Aitanya, who's your mama? 10-point lead for España. Vatori, high arc on that too. Taste greatness. Sweet shot from the left wing. Interior feed to Kanea. She holds off the defender and she's able to flip it up and in. Flip. 17-8. This one's got the potential to end before the limit. It's going by quickly. TV timeout as we're at 3.07 to play. España within four points. Cruz into a 4 0 record here in pool play. Quarterfinals begin on Saturday. That is day five. The two and three seeds from each group will get a spot in the play-in round. And Spain have no worries of having to play in the play-in round an extra game. They'll get an extra game of rest if they hold, uh, hold off Israel. It might not be a matter of if, but when. That's how things have gone in this one. Clearly the, the more in sync team as their talent continues to flourish. Kimeno makes it 18 to eight. That pass taken away. Igaravide will get it back. She's all alone. Rattles off the iron. Cohen's got position, but Haddad decides to take it herself. The mid-range jumpers miss, but Baturi, the follow also missed. Jimeno snatches the ball for the Spaniards. You get a Vide making her move. She's missed a couple of twos. She drives and kicks. Kanea goes with the scoop. And she's been pretty dang on active in this game. España within two of ending it. We got two minutes to go in this one as Cohen uses a spin move to get open on the baseline and she puts it up and in. But with a two-piece, this thing would be over with. Kanea misses. Good position on the rebound. And she's hacked. Israel's eighth foul already in the penalty. Couple of free throws coming up for Marta Kanea. Rocket number three in red, Kanea. She does her routine, but she's a little off target on that first attempt. Game point if she hits this one. Minute 49 left, and oh, she missed them both. A rare empty trip to the strike. Oh, and an and one. 
So Cohen has been really the lone bright spot on this Israel team as they still trail it by nine. Six foul on Espana. It will take an historic comeback at this point for Israel to get the win. If they came back and won this, we'd be talking about this game for ages. Oh, Aitana lost the handle. She shields the defense. But Israel stays active. Get the tip, and it's out for the two. Two is too long. He get a V-Day. She'll swing it. Kimeno. Dribble drive. He get a V-Day. Flips it over her shoulder like a backpack. Game point, Spain. They just came out of an overtime game, a tough contest against Canada. This one is a walk in the park for Espana. Jimeno wants to end it now. She shoots the two, missed. You get a V-Day. We'll find her way to the ball. She steps into the two, and she's also missing it long. Robert essentially giving a layup. Spain just want the ball back. They want to put this thing away. They'll give up a layup in order to get that. An easy sacrifice for them. Oh, Robert, good hustle. Cohen on the cut. So they'll make it a little bit more respectable. You got a Vida misses. Aitana, instead of taking the one, they want a two. They don't want any concerns in any type of tiebreaker. The more points you score, uh, the more it helps you. But 15 to 20, at the end of the day, this game is going to look a little bit better in the final score than maybe whatever it actually was. 15 points for Israel. Spain with game points, 16 points for Israel. You get a V day. She's going to chunk the deuces here at the final horn. You better believe it. You get a V day. <laughs> the dos is bien. So are the Spaniards. So they give us some dramatics. It took all the way to the, essentially the limit for them to get it done, but they do end up with 22. And there's a look at the last shot that rolls in. That final score of 22 to 16, not really indicative of how dominant this performance was for Espana. Uh, but they don't care nothing about that. All they care about is the win, a win, by the way, that will give them the number one seed in Group D. Nobody else is undefeated like they are. So the battle for second and third is really what's at stake for the rest of the day in Pool D, which we will get one more game, which the Netherlands and Canada will lace them up against each other. That's going to be another fun one. This one, though, as dominant of a performance from the four seed as you would expect. Spain being Spain. Canea was really good. Outstanding, even. Coming off a game where she sent it to overtime. Iguera was the one who kind of set the tempo. She was the engine starter for Espana, the catalyst couple of two balls for her and she scored the first four and then we saw a passing like that those are five star dishes ladies and gentlemen Kimeno every uh, everybody got in on the action here Cohen again as I mentioned in the game she was the really the lone bright spot on Israel's team see again every day getting fancy with it most uh, Israeli highlights, courtesy of Cohen, and there is your last shot. You get a V-Day putting it on ice for Spain as they rack up 22 points without a problem. So what's next, you ask? Well, you didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyway. USA men, how you like that? The United States men will lace them up against. Let's see who their opponent is. Huh? 
Every, Egypt. Oh, we haven't seen Egypt. That's why I was wondering, like, wait. Some of the stuff is from memory, but I should have that near me. Egypt. We will see Egypt for the first time today. We'll actually see him two times in this final um, five games. Now four games after we saw the Spain win. USA coming off a, a loss. Yes. In a hot contest against Belgium. Egypt come in 0-2. I think it's so cool that at the World Cup 3x3, you got teams from all over everywhere. Oceania, Africa, Canada, the United States, South America with a Brazilian team. Chile represent. Mongolia, China, Japan. 27 countries in total. Egypt is here. They're still growing as a 3x3 nation. But here's their squad. Ahmad Yasser, Abdel Rahim, Abdel Wahad Mohammed, Mido Taha, we call him Cairo Irving, Moaz Ayman Mustafa Mohammed, and Rami Abdallah. Top scorer on this team is Abdel Wahab Mohammed at eight points. They need a little bit more out of, of Mido Taha. He's their most electric player with four points though. Meantime, the Americans got their mean faces on. They suffered an overtime loss to the homestanding Belgians, James Parrott and Khalil Iverson, the new additions to this American quartet. 3x3 vets, Kadati Brutus and Disco Damo Jones. They joined their new teammates, and they look like they're ready to go. There's a certain reputation that comes when you have uh, those three letters across your chest, the USA, the red, white, and blue. And if they had made just a couple more free throws, honestly, against Belgium, then I think they'd be coming to this contest undefeated. But a couple of misses from uh, Brutus at the line and a couple of misses from Parrott as well. And all of a sudden, you make half of those. That game's not an overtime loss. It's a one or two point win. They've had time to think about it and talk about it. I know that Coach Joe Lou's got these guys ready to roll. Expect this American team to come out and play with some serious fire in their last pool play game. Belgium is in line to get the one seed and, and that ticket straight to the quarterfinals if they can win their final contest is, again, we'll see the, the Lions back in action too. As they will, uh, they'll lace them up against Slovenia. No, I'm sorry, Belgium. Belgium, I mean Austria. Come on, it's been a long day. How are the Belgians gonna play the Belgians? Come on, the voice. <laughs> Austria, who lost to Slovenia. See, that's what I meant to say. All right. Ain't no time for games. It's time to get to it. How about it? Before we do, I got I to gotta shout out the USA media team. The digital team. What's up, Trenton? Trent Miller. Saudia Michelle. Saudia. And the communication team. Justin, Justin Trujillo. Good seeing y'all out here in Antwerp. No bias, just so just so we're clear. I am from the States, so I do some I've done some stuff for USAB. Brutus stroke was broke. He's got to get it going. And he gotta be careful with Cairo Arvin. That dude is tricky with the cookie. But here come, here come the Egyptians. They want to get a win. Everybody wants to beat the USA. Moaz recovers that one, and Egypt strikes first. Dama with the move. He'll kick it out to Brutus. Kadani, all net, all wet. USA two, Egypt one. Cairo Urban will kick it. Moaz wants a, another bucket. He misses it. Ball finds his way back to him. Rami 
He's their leading scorer. Oh, he got Iverson off his feet. He flies by and he puts that ball in. Iverson a shot blocker, but he's got to stay disciplined defensively. Oh, that did Damo? I thought Damo might have saved that off of uh, an Egyptian player, but he didn't get there quite in enough time. So Cairo Irving up top against Disco Damo. Cairo Irving. He's yet to score his fifth point of the tournament, yet. Damo will pull the trigger. Oh, try to quickly get it over to Iverson, but he couldn't do it. James Perrin, AKA the Slim Reaper, sleeks his way to the basket. Cairo Irvin, quick cross, look back at him, dime dropped. He's a coin collector. Iverson will elevate, answer right back. And I said that Cairo Irving is tricky. You've got to keep an eye on him. He's an excellent ball header, handler, has a great first step. And he hasn't played really up to par to this point, so he's got a point to prove too. 4-1, USA. Mido kicks it out, long ball. It's too long. Parrott snatches the rebound. He's going one-on-one -on -one against Rami. He elevates. He can check him off the to-do list. Moody. He's going to let Cairo Irving go to work. Kadani. All in his face, and he's going to get the rock back on the right wing. So Kadani outstanding in the first two American games. As he came in as a leading scorer today with 13, Parrott is now being aggressive on the offensive attack, but that ball is tipped and taken away. Mito, step back. Front iron. Over to Rami. And the Egyptians are keeping pace here in the first three minutes of the contest. Khalil Iverson. His shot was laggy. That one air mail. Rami, he puts it up, misses it, gets it back, cannot put it in. Now it's going to be Moody's turn, and he's going to make the lay. Parrott will start the possession here for the Americans. As direct deposit will swing it over to Air Parrott. He will get it back. Oh. He tried to bang on Moody's head. Took his time. <laughs> Nearly put it down, but instead, it's a foul call, and that will put Parrott on the line, shooting one. After a TV timeout, 6.49 left. What's good, good people? Kyle Montgomery, a.k.a. the voice of 3X3 in your ear. Day three of the seventh edition of the FIBA 3X3 World Cup, officially known as the Creline FIBA 3X3 World Cup 2022, this edition. If you're new to this thing, let me remind you that the American men won in 2019. You may not have watched earlier. You may not have watched one of the first two games. I got to take care of everybody. Perry, uh, this time he's good at the free throw line. I ain't going to talk about what happened last game. 6-5, it happens to the best of us. Moaz lost the cookie. Oh, Damo was trying to get it to Parrott. It. It's mishandled. Moody. Let's see what kind of mood he's in. He misses Damo. The diminutive Damo gets the rebound. He puts on the brakes and he broke him off. Moaz step back. Hand in his face. Good contest by Parrott. Damo will quickly get it over to Air Parrott. He goes up top in Iverson. He puts it down. A strong layup. Nearly a dunk. They'll take the strong layups. They'll get them however they can come. Fader. Not happening. Iverson will come away with it. The G-Leaguer. To Parrott. Goes back up top. Iverson out to Disco Damo. Welcome to my dance floor. It's time for you to leave. Oh my God. <laughs> he, made, he made his back pockets touch the Enlio floor. 
Don't do that, Damo. Disco lets another one fly. That one missed, but Parrot, oh, I thought Parrot would hit it, but he doesn't. An easy miss there as USA lead it by nine. The entry feed, Moody lets the defender fly by. And Egypt staying within striking range. Damo, this is his playground. He's going to put it up, and he's going to draw the whistle. Disco Damo, one of the most accomplished 3x3 players in the game's history. He is a World Tour Masters winner. He is a Pan American Games gold medalist. He's trying to become a World Cup gold medalist. He's a Red Bull USA B champion as well, and he shoots his free throws with one hand. That's how good he is. He's been doing that since high school. I like this matchup between Mito and Damo. Dime time. He sets up Moody for the finish. And then Moody is whistled for the foul. I can tell that Mito is playing with some confidence. He keeps gl glancing over at me like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey, I know the skills are there. Just over five to play. USA started their their first set of pool play games with a four-point win over Austria and then a 22-9 win over Slovenia. After that, it was a 18-20 loss to Belgium in OT in a highly charged game. Let's look at Damo again. You going to show that replay? Oh, my goodness. Don't be looking at nobody else. Silliness. Damo's been known to play with his food. Here comes Iverson on a beeline to the rim. JP going baseline. He lays it in. Moody looks off the defense. Rami outmuscles Parrott for the score. Four point lead for the Americans. Brutus just long on the release. Mito tries to get the step. No look, set up. Moody blew at that time. As Iverson, he's going to go to the post. Oh, the fade was well, not a good look. Out of bounds it goes. The Americans still with a two possession lead with 421 to play. This is group D action. Mito. Stop, couldn't pop. What we're seeing though is Egypt is is out rebounding uh, the Americans. And it may actually shock you that Egypt was one of the top rebounding teams from, well, actually, excuse me, they were they had the least rebounds. Damo, ah, uh, getting tricky on him, but he missed the layup. But Egypt actually, with 24 rebounds in the first two pool play games, the least of all competing teams in groups A and D. Damo, look my one hand. Five point advantage for the Americans. Mito step back. All air. TV timeout, we're under four minutes, 3.51. And a five-point lead for USA as they eye a three-and-one pool play campaign. Let's listen in to Egypt's hope.
So a warning on White delaying the game. It's blue ball. Air Barrett! Oh my lord! He buried him underneath the wheel. Here lies a man who shouldn't have jumped. He didn't. But now he's on a viral video. Oh lord! Air, Air Barrett! He finally catches a body. <laughs> <laughs> oh man I call him the Slim Reaper for a reason he will take your basketball life six point lead for the Americans I was pushing everybody around me I'm, I apologize I get excited when stuff like that happens Disco Damo, the show is yours. Be Whoa, we, all right. The Americans out here trying to catch bodies like Wilt Chamberlain. <laughs> all right, I'll stop, I'll stop. <laughs> 324 to play. Oh man, Iverson will step up to the stripe now and he will knock it down. Seven point lead for the red, white and blue. Mito will get it back. He puts on the brakes. Iverson up top. Kadani open, but he couldn't close the deal. Good look from two range. That one rolls out. Direct deposit. His balance is low right now, as he's been missing like a ghost town. It's uh, 15 to eight. Every, every pass that Cairo Irving throws is fancy. Even if it's just a regular pass, he's doing a low look. <laughs> Damo, he's got it off safety. 17-9. Rami looks at Damo and pulls the trigger himself. Kadani can't come down with it. It's saved as Rami will go to work. And he makes easy work of Damo. He says, you too little. Mito, wait, we got a whistle. No basket. So we'll see exactly what uh, official Vlad, what the issue is. You can see Damo standing straight up. There's no whistle on that on that play. Damo's down, but I think he had something to say potentially to the official. I'm speculating here. But I do know that there was no foul call on that play. Okay, a technical foul call on White for delaying the game. Remember they had got a warning previously, but this is why after that's that's the call you cannot attempt to grab the rebound after a made bucket in that semicircle and uh, that's a good call sharp it's 220 left and usa is within three of walking away with a third win Damo setting up. Oh, another monstrous dunk from the Slim Reaper. Oh, look at that dish. That was exquisite. Cairo Irving. Meantime, oh, Damo cooking like Bobby Flay. That's dessert. The final dish. And the final score of the game as the Americans will finish up group play three and one. They'll be playing day five. You probably would have expected that. They were all business like the front of the plane in this one. And they handle what was in front of them.
Again, three and one is how they wrap things up. Let me assist Julian DeBaugh as I pass it over to him. He's standing by with James Parrott. James, uh, thank you so much for all the highlights in this game. Thank you so much for all the highlights in this game. How did you, you know, find the energy to come back after the game against Belgium? Obviously, you are very, very disappointed. Uh, how did you manage to come back and provide this kind of uh, show here? Uh, we, gotta, we just had to stick together. We had to talk about what we were doing wrong the first game and then fix it the second game, and we got the win, so that's good. Man, how does it feel for you, a kid from Nebraska, to be here on the, you know, on the biggest stage, wearing USA on your chest? It must feel so special. Oh, yeah, this is a, a great moment for me. I'm happy I got this opportunity, so thank you. All right, this is just a, a, first, a first step. Obviously, you have bigger goals. Talk about you know, what brought you here and what's your motivation. Say that again, I can't hear you. Obviously, this is just a first step. Uh, your goals are to go much further in the competition. Talk about what's the, the end goal here. Yeah, we just got to go back, watch film, and fix what we do wrong, and then uh, we can uh, compete for that gold medal. So that's what we got to do. All right, congratulations, man. Congratulations indeed. And as we look back at uh, the highlights, you will see plenty that you will probably be seeing for a while. Uh, <laughs> our top plays from this American team, whether it was that vicious uh, Damo step back or one of the many James Parrott dunks, this American team is fun to watch. Uh, credit to Egypt. I don't, I don't want to sound like. Uh, I don't respect their game because there were some highlights in this one too. Look at Cairo Irvin. That dude was putting on the show, especially with his ability to pass the ball. But Parrott was a man on a mission. He was out here like Tom Cruise. And it was, that wasn't Vanilla Sky, but he did sky to the rim, drew a foul. That, there's Damo with the step back. There's Khalil Iverson. And here's that move out. Why? Send that man a location, please and send that man a headstone. <laughs> that was just built from air parrot. And it's apparent that this American team is not a joke. Don't you dare laugh. There's Parrot again getting bouncy on his trampolina. Egypt did put up a good fight, but it was not enough to hang with the red, white, and blue as a, the United States are done with their pool play campaign. They are three and one. So for Belgium to take the top seed in their own backyard, they're going to have to get a win to close the day. And again, they'll be lacing them up against Austria, who come in one and two. They suffered a big loss against Slovenia, who are right in the mix to potentially get maybe the, the three seed. So obviously, we got more work to do. It looks like, uh, who's this? Mario? Mario's on the court.
could you learn one or two of your three to the fans? Could you? Okay. Yeah? Okay. One to learn some drinks to the fans, of course. One to learn, of course, for learning some drinks to the fans. I need a fan, I need a fan. A kid? Yes, I know, I know, I know. I need a kid, of course. A kid. Got Charlie Brown coming around. Charlie Brown. Oh my goodness! He just crushed on him like peppermint patty. Here's Rowe. He's gonna hand it off to Trigger Trey. Off the miss! Put that back! Trey Lansley sticks the landing. to wrap it up it's in the books team usa they go to a semi
ridiculous. Hey, hey. Oh my goodness. Oh, the Costa bringing out the sham god. Team USA, they'll embarrass you. I didn't know DaCosta had that. Pulling out the sham here in, in Chengdu. It's one of my favorite moves. Left lonesome. She reroutes, changed direction. Goes behind the back like a surprise and sets Katie Lou up for two. Gone. That's so nice. We got to see it twice. Minya Toure putting pop on her backside with the Ginsu slice on the crossover. My goodness. Oh, her ankles will never be the same. That was disgusting. Anastasia Sushi. No. Nice pass oh, by Bergani. This is the way of the day. She had an eye in the back of her head, and she spotted her open teammate for a spectacular dish. Well, 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 here we are. We hope y'all enjoyed those top plays. I could watch those over and over and over again. My favorite was uh, that Anastasia Sushi crossover. Man, that's number two on the list, but <laughs> oh man. I don't know if her ankles were ever the same. Anyway, we got some action in front of us, don't we? Yeah, we do. Netherlands coming in. Not looking too bad. They got a two and one record. They picked up a win uh, the first day of action over Israel. They lost to Spain, but they were able to bounce back uh, just a while ago with a big win over Chile. That puts them at two and one. And they have, if they get a win here, they're going to be sitting pretty going into day five. But nothing is guaranteed in this game of 3x3. And especially when you're going up, up against a team like this, Canada. They have a wealth of talent from the neighbors up north, for me at least, coming from the United States. Really well put together team featuring the sisters, the Poof sisters. 
and Casey Bosch, as well as Paige Crozon. They did not come out victorious their last time out. Went to overtime with Spain, lost it. Their first loss of the tournament, but they beat Chile. They beat Israel. If they beat the Netherlands, that means a three and one pool play record for them. They cannot get in reach of that direct spot in the quarterfinals because that belongs to Spain. Spain beating Canada again in that uh, overtime win. And you kind of figured that that game right there would decide who was going to be number one out of the group. Yuyen Su and Vlad Gizdarenu. They will officiate this thing right here. But even, you know, the Netherlands can win this. They, they've played, these two teams have played each other very tough in the women's series and national competitions. Natalie Van Dinadale, she's got her game face on. She'll likely draw the assignment of Michelle Plouffe a lot in this game. And figuring her out is like figuring out Chinese arithmetic. That is difficult. Tough guard. And when you don't have to deal with her, you got to deal with her sister. What happens next? That's the question. The winners play Germany in the play-in game. Losers match up with Lithuania. We saw Germany earn their way into a day five in dramatic fashion with a win over Japan. Lithuania suffered a hiccup against China to start the day, but they were able to bounce back with a huge comeback win in their final pool play game. So we will know what half of the quarterfinal um, play-in game bracket will look like. That's day five. This is day three, so we, remember, we still got one more day of pool play, which will decide the other side of the bracket, pools B and C. Kyle Montgomery, in your ear, happy to be here. A few more games left on the slate today after this Netherlands-Canada entanglement. We will get Austria and Belgium on the men's side. And then our final game, we'll get another look at the Slovenian men's team after picking up that win over Austria. That's for later. This is for now as Lois Bentonville fires and misses. Michelle Plouffe getting it over to Kat Plouffe. She's going to the post office. And she gets fouled. Take another look as the four-time Women's Series event winner steps up and shoots. Uh, uh. Oh, cookies. Michelle Plouffe, I'll take that and you take this. Offense to defense. The Duchess to Lois Lane. That's a nice hookup right there. As the Netherlands are on the board. Ploof up and in. That loose ball is going to end up in Shaw's hands. Van Den Adele fading but missing. Crozon turns the corner. She's got the scoop, but she doesn't have the right play. Get her right. Packed house still. 17 games into a 20 game slate, dates three. Second day of pool play for these teams. But all in all, our third day of action of six here in Antwerp, Belgium. Dreesen, pull up, splash. They clear out some space and they let Cat go to work. She's been putting in overtime. She's going to score the bucket with the foul. The Plouf sisters, 29 years old, ranked two and three in Canada. Crozone is actually the top ranked player on this team at number one in Canada, 12th in the world. Dreesen looking for a cutter, but a little bit of miscommunication with Janine Kraut. 
Minute and a half nearly in. Canada with a three-point advantage. As we get back to the action, Michelle Plou fakes the handoff. Instead, she goes to the spin move. Doesn't complete the score after putting Dreesen down. Bosch doesn't matter. An offensive foul will cost the Canadians the possession. You can look. Plouffe pushing off on Lois Lane in the lane. And the Orange Lions will take over. Sha Long on the shot. Michelle to Cat. And she's going to lay it in. Canada's got to really play for, with some purpose here. You know they're still they had that lost to Spain president of mind coming into this contest. Game that they would have loved to win. But Sandra Igatavide and company, they will finish group play 4-0. They pass like the teacher's pet. 7-2. Canada. The Duchess spins, steps through. But the choreography was all wrong. Far too many steps. Turn it on two to the O3. There we go. All right. Around comes Cat Blue. Michelle being harassed by Dreesen. Cat puts it up. Off the backboard. On the attack. All the orange lions. Dreesen. Little jab step gets enough space. After the miss, Crozon misses the layup. She laughs that one off. Janine will swing it over, and uh, it's another miss for Dreesen. Maybe a little bit fatigued on those two two-point releases. She's got Bosch on the right wing. She finally gets it over to her. Now Cat. Splitting the defense. Oh, but she sold the bag. That would have been an easy score. Instead, Canada will have to reset top of the key. Michelle goes to the cross. Spin around. Now she's going to split the defense. Lost it temporarily. Gets it back. She's not going to get continuation there. Or did she? She does. Plus the whistle, 8-2. Let's listen in on that Dutch huddle. Defense, he blijft gewoon terug en blijft ook. Zij willen ook een hand opgeven en doorgaan. Nou, dan stopt er een klein stukje ervan af. Nu dan, maar je licht. Go to FIBA.basketball slash world, 3x3 World Cup to keep up with all of the happenings here in Antwerp. We're going to crown a gold medalist, silver medalist, and a bronze medalist for the seventh time in FIBA 3x3 history. Michelle Plouffe adds to their total. And and one. The Duchess chunks the deuces, but it goes off the rim as Crozon will move quickly. Oh, she's got Lois off balance. She, a series of moves, but Lois recovers defensively. She's going to take that. Nice feed. Oh. Janine couldn't make it go. Bosch will swing it over. Michelle. It's 11 and 2, just like that. The Duchess couldn't get the fade to go. Ploof with the deuce. She's the truth. 13 2. Canadians are blazing. Treating Antwerp like it's Toronto. 11 point lead. Let's see if the Dutch can make a game of it. Not with that kind of defense. Crozon. Long range. Cat misses. Bosch is there for the rebound and the score. Dreesen, nice handle on it. 
She stops short. She's going to kick it out. The Duchess, she's letting it fly. She is not trigger shy. And they're going to they're going to have to shoot with no conscious. But do you want to get in the shootout with Paige Crozone and company? They get more twos than preschool. 16 2 contest. And there's the Duchess underneath. Their third point of the game. KP sets it for CB. Ploof throws it off of the Duchess' knees. And that will save them uh, just under two seconds to get a shot up. 1.8. 5 11 officially on the clock. Bosch's pass is deflected. Get an offensive foul. Gives it right back. Bosch up fake long. Thirteen point lead for Canada. Lois Lane to Dreesen. Dreesen, flick of the wrist. Touches nothing. Fresh 12 for the Canadians as they are within five points of putting this one to bed. The Plouffe sisters back on the attack. Bentonville sets the screen. Long arms pokes that away. Paige coming around. She thought about the two instead. She's going to reset. That's some strong defense. Too strong. Lois whistle. Ploof to ploof. That one eventually off of the Netherlands. Michelle, cash money on a turnaround. This game out of hand quickly. Meantime, the hand's effective for Plouffe as she got the block, but the shot doesn't fall from the right side. Van Den Adele, deep strike. All right, breaking the action. Let's, be ready Let's get a sneak peek into Canada's huddle. Yeah. If we have a ball in action, yeah. if you're riding with two, the shooter, we need to come back for a quick pass. Relay. 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 We got that one, two, three. Yeah. Okay, so the Netherlands will start it from the logo. They have got a tough task, to say the least, trailing by 12. And the Canadians showing no sign of letting up here as Casey Bosch will try to find Plouffe. An offensive foul is called. As Catherine just is a little too aggressive. Yep, you can see her extend those arms and turn it into a push and roll. Point of emphasis this year. Can't do that. Van Den Otto misses, but it's recovered. Lois Lane saves the day. Crozon will hand it. Bosch comes around. She stops short. That's some tight defense. Jab step. Late in the shot clock. Catherine had to force it up. So an empty possession for Canada. There haven't been many of them. 
Full D action for the women coming to a close here. We will not see any more pool play. Dreesen does not put enough on the mid-range jumper. And time is not on the Netherlands side. We're down to three minutes to play. Quick move, ploof. Back iron, long rebound to Van Den Otto. Sha, quick move. The Duchess to the baseline. She's gonna earn a trip to the stripe with the foul. So up steps Nat Van Den Adel. Easy work from the free throw line. 10 point difference. And that's just easy money right there. The twins connecting. No service from the deep side as Canada keys in on what will be a third win. All they need is a trio of points with 229 to play. They shot the ball incredibly. Their only blemish on the resume was an overtime loss to Spain. They don't get that one up. Shot clock violation. So it's a matter of time or a matter of points. 18-7. The Duchess. She wants to drive that she does and show some great touch with the left-handed finish. Here's Catherine. She pulls up but comes up short. No basket. Vanden Otto is arguing her case. She says that she wants the two to count. That would get them within eight. But obviously, 152 left. They're going to have to have a, a whole lot more go right for them. Vanden Otto, she makes it anyway. Back-to-back -back twos, but only one of them counted. There's a foul on that two attempt by Michelle Plouffe. And again, the Netherlands come in two and one, as do the Canadians. Spain already with the top seed in the group. Plouffe is going to bring them one step closer. Make that one point away from game point. The Duchess has got the green light, and there's another green release. Perfection from the left wing, but an eight point difference in game point for the Canadians. It's a matter of time, and that time is now. It's over. 21 12 before the limit. Canada handle the Netherlands. As the final game in Group D wraps up. Spain, Canada, and the Netherlands. The Netherlands are going to finish two and two. That's good enough to get them past Israel and Chile, who struggled in pool play competition. More on that later, but right now, we want to hear from one of the Plouffe sisters, that's Catherine Plouffe, standing by with Julian DeBoer. Let's get it over to him. Ju. Um, Kat, 3x3 is a very easy game when you play like that and you make all your shots. How satisfied are you with your performance and the performance of your team in this game? Uh, super proud of my team. Uh, we had a hard loss against Spain last game and um, we talked about this is character building and it's a long tournament, so proud of all of us for grinding it out and taking care of business. So the reward for this perfect game is that you get to play in the play-in against Germany. 
So you know I like to bring up some uh, old memories. You sure. played them at the Women's Series final last year. Yeah. It didn't necessarily go well. So, you know, how much more does it bring to this game? Yeah, uh, I think it's a good matchup for us. We talked about it and uh, we're ready for whoever we, uh, we got with the crossover. Um, we did win the, f the series final. Um, we beat them in the pool play though, so um, we're 1-1. They beat them in Montreal, so it's always a battle against them. Um, they're a great team. They have a lot of chemistry, um, but we do too, so I'm excited to play them. We're excited too. Thank you. I like the confidence. Catherine Plouffe setting the record straight. Yeah, they got us in the final, but we got them before too. So we ain't scared, we ready. I'm ready for that matchup too. That'll be one of the play-in games that is already set, Germany and Canada. This is how Canada took that number two spot. They wiped away that loss to the Spaniards and came out with a dominant 21-12 win over the Netherlands. Again, before the limit. Nice ball movement, great shooting. They're loaded to the, to the tee. And they were unloading, whether it be outside the arc or inside the arc. They had it rolling. Just too much. One through four for the Netherlands. The Dutch has put on a good showing. She really started finding her stroke from long range. What she did that, it started getting a little bit more interesting, but it was one of those cases of too little, too late. And uh, here's one of her quartet of twos in the game. Van Den Otto finds the bottom of the net there. But the Canadians, scoring in bunches they're done we are not two more games left and it's up to the fellas to finish off strong in pool d austria and belgium are on deck followed by egypt and slovenia We've got a couple of minutes before that gets underway so we'll enjoy some of the local local entertainment here before we get, it. yeah, let's take a look. Here's the pool situation. Pool D, I told you, Spain, they, they didn't lose. They look good. Canada go three and one. The Netherlands go two and two, but it's enough to advance them to day five. Their medal hopes are still very much alive. Chile and Israel are out. Chile got their only win against Israel. So that's pool D for the women. We can't give you a complete graphic on Pool D for the men because that's not decided yet. But it will be after two 10-minute sprints. Look at that skyline. Isn't that just gorgeous? A lucky man I am, am to have this job and to play at venues like this in incredible cities like this with outstanding athletes like these. Sometimes you just got to take it in. Somebody pinch me. There's the Cathedral of Our Lady, the Roman Catholic Cathedral here in Antwerp. Contains a number of significant works by Baroque painter Peter Paul Rubens, as well as uh, artists such as Otto Van Veen and Jacob de Bakker, Martin de Vos as well. Surrounded by history. Love it. 
It's going down here at Grunplatz. Known as the Green Square if you're watching from America. Everybody representing where they from. You see that Belgian flag. The Lions are up next. Coming off a big win over the Americans. The people are on their feet. That can only re mean one thing. The Lions are taking the court. They got a chance to go undefeated. Austria will take the court for it first. Nico Carlton Brunner's brother, Stephen Carlton Brunner. All energy all the time. Providing a spark on this Austrian team who came into today's competition one and one with a win over Egypt but a loss to Team USA, a close loss to USA. They end up losing 22 to 20 to Slovenia. A really hard pill for them to swallow. MC, MC Lightning, shout out to him. Not only can he keep the crowd hype, he can dance too. So Matthias Lenortner and Martin Tremal round out that Austrian quartet. Out come Belgium. Maxim Depute. He was their second leading scorer coming into the day with 14 points. He certainly contributed against the Americans. That's Maxim Deput with Brian Devault who caught a body against uh, the USA. So another notch under his belt. He's joined by Olympians Nick Sellis. And the hottest name in 3x3 right now, Must See TV. Thibaut Vorvort. They got their eyes on that top spot in Group D and a direct spot in the quarterfinals where they will await the winner of the play-in game. Two officials are in place. Marcos Nicolides and Yasmina Uris. Couple of smiles before it gets real serious here. And it's really serious for Austria because they fully expected to beat a lesser experienced Slovenian team. Martin Jamal was very upset after that game. And now they're gonna have to beat the Lions in their own backyard. There he is, Musi TV. To both Vorvort. The dude scored 60 plus points at the Olympic Games en route to their fourth place finish. I know that there wasn't a medal, but again, these guys have been playing together for not even a full year. And to put together that type of run, super duper impressive. When I walk through the city, I'll, he's the only person that the Belgians want to talk to me about. What do you think of Must See TV? What do you think? He's good. Yeah, I like him. He's, he's a certified bucket. <laughs> I can't take nothing away from him. But don't forget about Nick Sellers, too. And don't forget about uh, Thierry Marion and, and Rafael Bogerts, who had big roles in helping that team in their Olympic run as well. You got to spread the love, y'all. All right, the countdown is over, so it's on. Austria 
trying to pull off a shocker. They're certainly going to have to shoot it well from deep. Jamal really showing that extra energy boost at the start of this one. Brian DeVault gives it over to Must See TV. But DeVault takes the contact. He misses the shot, but he's going to get another shot. This one with no defenders in his face. Free throw line, he goes. Zibolt, routinely one of the top scorers. He was more of a distributor in that game against the United States, and that's because he draws a lot of attention. He's going to get the scoring started for the Belgians, who even things up at one apiece. That shot was out of whack. Ball over to Vorvort and company. That was actually 61 points to be exact for Vorvort in that Olympic run. Top three score and he had a trio of game winners from deep as they just missed that podium finish. Nico Colton Brunner. Oh, he got the moves like Jagger. He finishes on the baseline. Oh, Maxim, he could not get that one to go. But Nortner with a hand in his face just misses the target. Steven Colton Brunner kicks it to his bro. His bro, Chuck the Deuces. And he banks it in off the backboard. Austria leading by three. I would assume that Belgium and Austria might have a at least a little bit of a rivalry. Up top, they go to Nick Sellis. Don't expect that to be a dunk, but it will be a finish. And Sellis giving Jamal a bump on the baseline. Tell us we get a rest. Shamal has been doing a scoring at a pretty decent pace for Austria, who are again without Philip Kramer, who's been really the centerpiece of the Austrian team the last couple of years. Injured himself a couple of weeks ago, and now that's the reason why he can't play. Maxim maximizing on his opportunity. He hits the deuce. Lenortner, soft hands, as he's able to land the layup. He and Jamal taking on the heavy lifting when it comes to the scoring on this team. Vort going off one leg. Oh, and a technical is called on Martin Jamal. I think he was trying to sell the idea that the Valk was bumping into him. That's what we got cameras for. Let's see the replay and see uh, who's really guilty here. Who is the real culprit? But for now, it's Austria getting hit with that technical. And they elect Vodavort to shoot the free throw, and he's going to knock it down. Tight game, two minutes in. Debut, he gets the steal. Vodavort comes around. Thibault hands it over. Clerk can't. You. Carlton Bruner. One point advantage for the Austrians. Can they really hold off the Lions in a game like this? Oh, oh offensive foul call. Here's how that happened. Yeah, Steven was trying to 
hand it off and set the screen at the same time. He got a little ahead of himself. Sellers, nowhere to go. Debout. Off the glass is Cash plus one. The crowd is in it. He's been a big ad on this Belgian team, let me tell you. So it looks like uh, DeVolk is going to have to check out his, maybe he's got it. yeah, he's got a little blood on his arm. The 29-year-old, DeBout, standing 192, will step up to the line. He's got a couple of international caps under his belt. He didn't get the, uh, the free throw to go. And it wouldn't have counted anyway because it was a lane violation. He's all, we've also seen him on the world tour a couple times. Uh, as a member of uh, Merksum here in 2022. There's Musi TV. He gets up to get down. Seven, six, lead after the Vavort flush. Lenortner put it in his face like a filter. Eight, seven. Great hit up top. DeBout lets another one go. No. But Vavort sidestep, pulls the trigger. Stroke was broke that time. Sellis gives it back. As Brevort quickly fires it over. Maxim. Oh, Sellers blew the crib. And a foul on Black. That's number five on Belgium. We are now at the point where we need a TV timeout. Austria with the early lead through the first quarter of this game. That's what's killing us right now a little bit. They're shooting. They're All right, you heard for the board say, let's get a stop. They got some help that time. That should have been a made layup. The Belgians come away with it, and the Austrians don't get away with a push. Foul call. It's Clerk Kent will start it at the top of the key. How do you get that nickname? Well, he's a he's a notary public. So we got creative with uh, with Nick Sellis's nickname. Pouch will start things out. He goes away to come back. Oh, front rimmed it. Black is going to have it. Day three. Coming down to the last couple of games. Pool D will officially be decided. Oh, Vervoort kept it alive and the vault is able to put it in. 8-8. Eight, eight. You knew this one would be tight. Belgium eyeing that one seed. Austria trying desperately not to fall to one and three because Slovenia is still on the schedule with a game against Egypt. They could get jumped. That would be devastating. Man. Nico Kaltenbrunner got an extra gear as he shifted and got to the rim. But the fouls are starting to rack up. As you can see, Kaltenbrunner upset with himself because he knows that that's seven. That puts them in the penalty and will allow Belgium to shoot a couple of free throws that could put them in the lead after Austria has been holding the lead for 
the first nearly five minutes of this game. DeVault, though, can't capitalize on the first of two. All they can do is tie now. But Austria has to be careful with just under six minutes to play and already in the penalty. It could be a prickly situation. Jamal gives it up to get it back. That is beautiful passing and a hell of a finish there from Jamal as well. Loving the defensive effort here. DeVault reroutes. Oh, offensive foul call. Belgium now up to six themselves. They'll be in a penalty with the next defensive foul. I guess DeVault didn't get turned around quick enough. Jamal flicks the wrist. Goes off the iron. Quick hands from Nico Kaltenbrunner. But Voigt says, look at Brian DeVault. 10-10. Take another look at the backdoor cut. And DeVault elevates and finishes with an exclamation. He's got easy bounce. 10-10 tie. Timeout on the floor. Both teams in the penalty situation in terms of their next defensive foul. Austria already there. They'll have to be careful to avoid getting the double penalty. Just a couple of ticks over five minutes left. Austria in much need of a win. Belgium, they just like to finish 4-0. DeBout does not knock that one down. Lenortner receives the pass. Tramal with the precision on the entry. Austria doing a great job in this game at this point. Give and go. The pouch, easy at the rim. Step back, Lenortner. He's hit some tough shots. Does not hit that one. Take another look at the connection. Nick Sellers is spreading it around. That's what he likes to do. Over Vort runs into trouble. That ball is stolen. As Carlton Brunner will come away. Now Nico. Oh, quick hands from DeVolk. DeVolk streaks to the rim, but he blew it. Nico with the up fake. Oh, great D. DeVolk blocked it from behind. Now Nick Sellis taking him on a trip. East to west, up top to must see TV. Late in the shot clock. Can't even ask him to hit that. Time for another TV timeout. 3.50 to go. 11-11. Let's listen. Back to where we go. Jamal. He's going to get another look. Passed up the two. The vault gets the whistle. That is unlucky foul number seven on Belgium. You see, DeVault, he knew the foul was coming. He couldn't move his feet quick enough. Martin Tremont playing with a lot of passion with Austria across his chest. 
His team has done everything necessary to not only stay in this game against the loaded Belgians, but to keep them in front. Right now, only in front by one, but now two. Second free throw was good. I think the crowd is in it. DeBout drives behind the back like espionage. The setup beautiful as the Belgians pull within one. Lenortner, oh. I think DeBout got away with one. He grabbed the jersey. Nobody saw it. He's going to grab the Wilson now as Nick Sellis will set up shop on the block. Oh, he's too little. Strong move from Clerk Kent. Jamal. He is not gun shy. And he's getting a warning from official Yasmin. He says, she says, no flopping. Stop it. DeVault. A nice backdoor. This, that slip. These guys are in sequence. The chemistry is evident. It's Carlton Bruner's shot goes begging off the back of the rim. 14-14. 244 and counting left in this one. Sellis, they left him alone. He does not complete the open look. DePout, runner, no. The tip is also a no. Steven Carlton Bruner is down. That means more free throws to follow. For Austria, eight fouls on Belgium. As they've caught the Austrians and they've really settled in defensively. Remember, Austria was in more foul trouble than the Belgians, but they found a way to settle down. And now Belgium is the squad with eight fouls. Their undefeated record on the line. I don't think that Belgium's top spot in the group is at uh, in jeopardy because they did win the head-to-head -head against the Americans. A win here for Austria, the best uh, they would finish is two and two. And then obviously we have Egypt and Slovenia. The best the Slovenians can hope for is a two and two finish as well. Uh, Egypt is 0 and three, so. They're not in the race. That's how things have played out to this point. So I think Belgium's gonna have that one seed anyway, but they playing with pride. And that's two to your eye from the guy named Must See TV. Nico Kalkbrunner with the ball fake and the jump hook. Strong, DeVault will take his time. Only a one point advantage. DeVault follows his own miss. He'll kick it to Van Voort. Thibault with the Valk on the cut. Layup. The crowd starting to feel it. Lenortner trying to silence them. He plays some D and comes away with the rock. Carlton Bruner can give him the lead. Big deuce. As Austria is in front. DePau could not knock that one down. Wide open look. Minute 33, Colton Bruner, same spot. Rolled off the rim. Devout to Devout. 18-18. Austria showing great fight. Can they pull this out? Colton Bruner, he's got the green light. He misses that long ball. The fans are on their feet. DePout, whoa, rolls out. For the Vort, the ball's in must-see TV's hands, and he can't get it, but DeVault didn't forget to tip. Gratuity gives Belgium a, a one-point advantage, and for the Vort can put it away. Good night, goodbye. Thanks for watching. Must-see TV. Make sure that his team remain unbeaten as they will head straight to the quarterfinals. Handing off.
Austria a third loss. They fall to one and three, and their hopes are dashed at the hands of the Belgians. The Lions do it again. They follow up a win over the Americans, and they leave it in the hands of Bervort to do it again. Great game, and, and Austria has lost several like that here during this tournament. Games that they just had in their grasp, but you can't leave that man open. It's insanity. Bervort, that's a layup. And 21-18, let me get it over to Julian DeBove, who's standing by with Must See TV. Can I do one thing? Then it's on? Go for it, yeah. It's on? Yeah. Did they, they hear me? Not yet. They can, yeah. Do they hear me? Yes. Yeah, you, you, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Thibaut, we're, we're going to try to do the interview now. Crazy game. Austria, we are playing for their survival. You are already qualified. Tell us about how did you find the motivation to come back, even though you are already qualified against a crazy Austrian team. Uh, yeah, we already qualified, but playing in front of a home crowd, we can't lose a game. So uh, we do it for our there, guys. It's been absolutely insane since day one here. Tell us, how many hours have you been able to sleep at night? I mean, did you manage to remain quiet, remain calm, and have a you know, normal night of sleep in the last few days? Uh, we don't sleep much these days, uh, but we get all the energy uh, just playing with each other, being in Antwerp, having this crowd behind us, and uh, we just want to win games, and that's what we're doing, so we, we're very happy. All right, congratulations again. Get some rest. When I say Belgium, you say Lions! Belgium! <laughs> That's why we call him Must See TV. He's got the crowd lit. They cannot wait to see this Lions team back in action day five. And uh, he said playing in front of the home fans, we can't lose the game. Well, so far, he's a man of his word. They haven't lost the game. Will they run all the way to gold unscathed? With Must See TV leading the way, I think they feel fairly good about their chances. We are not done yet, though, y'all. Man, the energy is crazy, but we got one more game to decide Pool D. We, we just said, said that Austria lost, which dropped them to one and three. You also have a Slovenian team who beat Austria, who came into the day 0-2. They are 1-2 against Egypt. Egypt could potentially get their first win of the con of the tournament, which would make them 1-3. That would make a three-way tie for that last spot. We would then have to go to total points to decide what that is going to be. So Austria is not done yet. But uh, they are certainly cheering for Egypt against Slovenia as we head into the final pool play game in Group D. Highlights in your face. An intense contest as Austria actually led for the lion's share of this game against the Lions. But they found a new gear in those final couple of minutes. Wasn't that pretty? There were a lot of fouls uh, both ways on this, in this game on both teams. We saw Musty TV setting the table again for the role players around him. But when it was his time, he showed up big time. Big shot, blow, as he unloads from two range and puts it away. Wow. So we, uh, we got a few minutes before we get to the next contest. We're about five minutes away, y'all. And again, you, you're going to want to stick around for that Egypt-Slovenia game because I know you want to find out who that third team is going to be in the group. We know it's Belgium is number one, USA is number two, but is it going to be Egypt? Is it going to be Slovenia? Is it going to be Austria? It comes down to that in about five minutes. Stick around.
DJ Dysfunctional got the Michael Jackson plan. I might break out one of these, break out the moonwalk. We need the camera over here quick before I change my mind. Okay, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I told y'all yesterday, I can't dance. There's DJ Last and DJ Dysfunctional. Twin spinning. What's up, DJ Last? Representing France, DJ Dysfunctional in his own backyard. Man, that it's one of the dynamics we love about 3x3, really. MC Lightning, MC, MC Vincent Royer, AKA La Voici. We are all a team that we, uh, that's what he calls himself, so I, <laughs> who am I to say different? Uh, but we love putting on the show and kind of adding to the product that you see on the court between the lines with the players who are obviously, uh, they are the center piece of, uh, of this event. But uh, we got one more to go. It's gonna stay lit all the way until the last horn. And this is how it's gonna play out. This is not a battle for the top seed. This is the, the battle for the last seed. Number one, straight to the quarters. We know that's Belgium. Number two, play-in game. The United States are there. It's either going to be Egypt again, Austria, or Slovenia. The Slovenians are picking it up here day two after an 0-2 start. Egypt did play the American team pretty well. And they're starting to kind of catch their stride as well. So this is going to be an interesting contest. Now, we haven't broken out the calculators yet. So I can't tell you exactly how many points are necessary, but I can tell you that a win is absolutely necessary for Egypt. Mido Mohammed, Rami Abdallah, Ahmed Yasser Mohammed, and Moaz Ayman Mohammed. They're back in the all white. Team Slovenia. They will make their way to the court. That, that young fellow looks interested. He, he looks a little worried, actually. I wonder who he's cheering for. Well, here come the Slovenians. Their reputation precedes them as one of the most active 3x3 nations since 2012 and one of the most successful as well. Here they are. Adrian Hirschman, he's a hired gun. Gasper Jordan Royko, he's active under the rim, rocking number 44. Jacob Strell, he's a sharpshooter too, along with Big Jur Leachin. Pretty, I'd say pretty evenly matched as well. So it's a coin flip. Uh, the game itself, and, and here's the actual coin flip. There it goes. And it is Slovenia's decision. It's going to be their ball. They dap it up, and soon those cell phones will be in people's pockets or laps because they got to be all, all eyes on this one. You win and fly. They will do the honors for game number 20 on the day and 58 game in total. We are past the halfway point. Cairo Irving. He was putting on a passing clinic against the United States. He had a few delectable dives. And uh, I'm sure he's going to be in his bag in this one. If it's one thing guaranteed that you're going to get from him is a no-look pass. <laughs> They're going to get some shots up and get warmed up. There's Gaspar Royko, 26 years old, stands two meters. I mentioned the formidable size that he possesses. possesses. He's uh, continually active under the rim. He's going to have to try to hold off number 14 on this Egyptian team, Rami Abdallah, as we give you a look at the Hilton Hotel. It's going to cost you a little change if you want to get a room over there. I'm sure if they stay on the top floor, they've been watching this 3x3 action as well. All right, the countdown's on. The final 10 minute sprint of day three. And here we go. Five, four, three, X, three. Let's go. Lee Shin to Hirschman, who hit the game winner. 
the two piece and he picks up where he left off. Moaz hops through, nearly makes that one, but he misses it, no problem. Well, they're having some problems finishing because Rami couldn't do it. The quick move and the kick out, Harshman, he wants another one. That one's short though, he sticks with it, saves it, but to the opposite team. They want to get it down low, they feel like they got a strength here as well, but a push on the defense. Fresh 12 for Egypt. It's Cairo Irving will swing it right to start. Moaz waiting for the offense to develop. He's tired of waiting. Quick move, but didn't finish at the rim. That's because of the length. Strell, strong to the right. So this is certain to have the intensity of, of the games that we're going to see on day five, which are elimination games. This is that. How bad do you want to continue to compete for gold? That's the question at stake for both of these teams. Cairo Irving, no. Man, he's so fast, he tracked down his own rebound. That pass, though, a little bit off target. Hirschman will give it up quickly. Lee Shin, he's doing his thing on the baseline, but he's held up by a foul. First on Egypt. Lee Shin will check out. Jordan Royko will check in. He receives the Wilson on the right wing. Passes up the attempt, the pass attempt. The shot attempt is no good. Oh, Mito stepped on the line. Even with little feet, you got to be careful. His heels hit the stripe and Blue will take over. That one poked away, quick hands. Jeremy not making things easy on Jordan Royko. Nine to shoot, Jordan Royko receives it. Strell, string music. Moody, and it's an offensive foul. Rami was not set before he started to roll to the bucket after setting the screen. Egypt still searching for that first bucket. Minute and a half into this last contest. Li Xin taking his time. As long as he doesn't dribble the ball, then that three second count does not start. There's a foul though, but just a reminder of the added rule this year. If Li Xin had put that ball on the Enlio, then that Three-second count would have begun. He's got it now. He's going to kick it back out. Hirschman, clear look. Not enough on it. Passes up the two this time. Side steps. Offensive foul called. I think Jordan Royko was trying to help him clear some space. He got the whistle. He checks out. Strell comes in. Yep. That's on Jordan Royko. He's boxing out Mido. Now it's Cairo Irving. Making his move, spin move, up fake. He's got nowhere to go on punishment. Rami drops. <laughs> Talk about a friendly roll. Answered right back by the Slovenians though. And a six to two game. So as if this game didn't have enough drama, enough. That shot was, was wild. Whoa, the snatch back for Mito. Pull up. Put him on the bucket list. 6-3 game. Mito, yeah, he accepts that foul happily because he was about to have to accept the bucket. Jordan Royko had him on his backside, and that would have been an easy lay-in. Instead, it's the fourth foul on Egypt to trail it by three. Strell. Jordan Royko coming around the mountain when he comes. And he finishes with the lay. Moaz, look at that quickness and elevation. Moody is there to clean up the mess. Strell, Ooh. a narrow miss there from him. 
Here's Moaz. He's got that quickness. Oh, he's got that defender lost. Somebody get him a location signal. TV timeout. No choice but to foul at the rim. Moaz is going to shoot one after they both get a breather. And a three-point lead for the Slovenians. All right, so here's how the qualifiers, Slovenia, they, they must win and they will advance. If Egypt wins, Austria qualifies. So Egypt, oh, they won't be playing day five. After all, I think they put themselves in too big of a hole because they weren't able to score enough points. Only eight and a loss to Austria and uh, 12 points and a loss to Belgium. That's going to make it difficult. Moody does hit it. Jordan Royko, he hits back. Mito trying to do something strange. He drops it off. Moody. Flotation device. So Egypt playing with some pride. But will not have a chance to play day five. Cairo Irving up through the contact. The small man scores big. Hirschman took him on a journey. Couldn't drop the two. Moaz, man, he puts so much pressure on the defense with that quick step. He's going to be able to either get to the rim and score or get to the rim and draw a foul, which we've seen him do consistently so far through nearly four minutes of this game. How consistent is he at the free throw line? They get a chance to tie here. He shoots and misses. Oh, but that ball comes back, and Moaz elevates. He can't do that, though. That possession change. He's got to clear it. So off the miss, you can see the possession changes. Mito then pokes it away, and then he gets a poke. Moaz, that is. But our officials all over that. Foul white, no bucket. So Slovenian win and they advance. Mito, oh, got to a spot somehow. Nearly got it back. That ball is loose. Slovenia comes away with it. Hirschman taking his time. He wants to screen. He's double teamed. They don't get that up in time. Strell is in. Jordan Royko is out. Strell has to fix his shorts. Mito all net. It just didn't go through the rim first. Both teams with five fouls. Slovenia have their own destiny in their hands. They hope that they don't fumble the bag. Hirschman with a nice drive and scoop finish. Mito up fake. That shot is up in enough time, but Moody couldn't land it. Mito saves it. Moody passes up the two attempt and finishes with the right hand on the left side of the rim. Hirschman, uh-uh. That out of bounds. So Egypt's trying to play spoiler here for the Slovenians. And if they do, obviously Austria will be able to advance. 
Take another look at that last drive from Hirschman. Nice dribble drive from him. And even Moody showing some quickness. And a little finesse. One point game. Here we go. Rami back door. Moody. Nice connection. Strell. Deed up. Back to back attempts. It's Moody again. Mido. Oh, he had him lost in the wilderness. Somebody helping. 11 10. Cairo Irving, the shot has not been there, but his friends are. Moody is going to give Egypt a two-point advantage. Harshman. Taking his time. He's got five to shoot. He finally does pull the trigger. Two to the head. Big shot from Adrian Hirschman, who's taking his game to the next level day two. Even things back up, and that is going to cool the waters a little bit for Slovenia. We're probably feeling the heat. He feels the pressure at the line. He's going to get two, though. Because he was, uh, obviously, he made the two, but that was the seventh foul on Egypt, so. A chance for a four-point play. He'll, be, he'll settle for three. He's gonna have to settle for just a two make. Good rebound that will keep the possession in Blue's hands. It leaves Hirschman's hands and hits Iron. Moody. He draws the foul. Six on Slovenia. 3.54 left, so you know what that means. Another TV timeout. A two-man game. All right, timeout is over. This one about four minutes away from being over. Maybe sooner. First to 21 wins. Mito will get it back. Quick pull. Long rebound. Out of bounds. Pressure defense. And you can see the Austrians are in the crowd too. Cheering for Egypt and <laughs> they're contending. That should be white ball. So more than just these two countries on the edge of their seats, that one hits the edge of the iron. That white ball off of blue. Yuyin says so. So that's that. 12-12. Moaz in his bag and finishes with the jelly. All he needs is some toast and butter. Long range look. Lee Shin couldn't knock it down. He's got no chance to stand in front of Mito, but Mito misses. And Rami puts it down. Strell hits the deuce. It's back even at 14. 
Moaz. Cross. Oh, missed it. Good tip out to Mito. Mito drops it off. Rami with another flush. Egypt regains the lead. The Austrian team is on their feet. Their hopes lie on the Egyptians. And time is getting tight. Both teams in the penalty situation with a defensive foul. 2.29 remaining. Okay. Moody taking his time. Rami, he puts the two up in the face. Technical foul on White. I think Rami earned that one after he made the two. He did some kind of signal or sign. I think that's what earned the technical. And that's a little rough because that two put Egypt up three. They certainly know when we're giving Slovenia freebies at the line, and they do. Makes it a one possession game and also gives possession over to Blue. He might have been uh, pointing at his Austrian homies over there. Like, I got you, don't worry. Are you sure? Ball over to White. Egypt nursing a two-point lead, but not just that. They're four points away from that coveted 21-point mark. That's all you need in this game. Mido moves left, lost it temporarily. Fading, missing, Moody can't get the follow. Oh, that's, that's going to be a foul. It's called on Mido as he was trying to get the rebound. I see some people arguing for a uh, unsportsmanlike there, but I don't, I don't think there's anything unsportsmanlike there. It's just a hard foul. And some pressure free throws for Lee Shin. He steps up, and first of two is good. What a way for the final day to come down. We're about to have potentially a 17-17 tie with a minute 53 left. A team playing with no hopes of continuing play on day five, just trying to ruin things for the other. Oh. Moody, he'll get the score. Jordan Royko, whoa, he lost the ball on the way up. Hirschman, oh, offensive foul. Slovenia's seventh, but an offensive foul does not warrant free throws. One point lead, Egypt. Cairo Irving. He'll give it up, gets it back. Misses it short. Hirschman, cross-court pass, lazy, stolen. Mido will take it away. Rami will turn around, he will shoot. He will miss Moaz though, look at activity on offensive glass. He nearly throws it away. Cairo Irving, open like a therapy session. He releases. Game point, Egypt. And Slovenia, who can control their own destiny, are against the ropes. Egypt had not won a game up until this point. Cairo Irving. After the make, Rami took an elbow to the face. And an unsportsmanlike foul is called on Jure Lishin. What a way for this game to unfold and unravel for the Slovenians. As it could end right here. Can you imagine the Austrian team?
They are smiling like it's Christmas Eve over there. One make is all it will take. Egypt flexing their muscles. They won't play day five, but they are celebrating as they do get a W. And they got some new friends in Austria. <laughs> So I think that Austria and Egypt are going to be friends for a long time. So they saved their best for last. Cairo Irving and company. Rami and them are celebrating like, like the quarterfinals are in front of them. A great game. You couldn't ask for a better finish unless uh, you're from Slovenia. 21-17, Egypt over Slovenia. They both finished one and three, as does Austria, but Austria will earn the third spot out of Group D. What a day, what a day, what a day. That is that. We'll show you uh, the scores from the day. After we give a look, give you a look at the final set of highlights. This one had an eerie feeling from the very beginning because Egypt was not backing down in any way. They were matching Slovenia shot for shot and they had fortune on their side, clearly. So they get the friendly roll there. The twos were flying, deuces were certainly wild. But Egypt was just constantly on the attack. They, explosive drives to the rim. Moody utilizing his link to finish. Great passing. Hirschman, who had been playing so well here day two. He had a solid game for the boys in blue. Moaz was an absolute terror on the drive. And you can see Stephen Kaltenbrunner standing up yelling triumphantly. It looked like Austria was done after that loss to Belgium, potentially. But somehow, some way, they still make it in. This was the biggest shot right here. Cairo Irving hits the two. The unsportsmanlike foul put Rami on the line. And at the end, it was the Egyptians flexing a muscle. These are the results from day three's action. It started way early this morning, 11 a.m., with a shocking win. Well, maybe not a shocking win, but China hands Lithuania, the women, their first L. They, of course, bounced back with a one-point win over Romania. They are in. Canada lost in an overtime thriller to Spain. Spain unbeaten as they get the top seed. Meantime, on the men's side, New Zealand found themselves in a tough battle with Puerto Rico. They ended up winning one in, uh, in OT. Nico McCullough with some heroics today. We saw Belgium beat the United States by two in a straight up thriller. Then U.S. runs by Egypt. They're in. But as for the women's pool standings, China gets the top spot out of the group. They go three and one, Lithuania and Germany occupy the two and three seeds. They both will have play in game matchups. As for the women, Pool D, Spain, unscathed, just like the Belgian men. Canada, they're only lost to Spain. They get the two seed. And as we get to Pool A for the men, Serbia. You forgot about them, huh? 4-0, <laughs> no losses. France gets the two seed. New Zealand gets the three seed. They will play on day five. And last but not least, Pool D for the men, Belgium, 4-0. They have not lost in front of this home crowd. USA, the two seed, Austria, thanking their lucky stars. They're in as the three seed, thanks to Egypt's win over Slovenia. Must watch tomorrow. Latvia's back as a full cast. They'll meet up with the Netherlands. Japan and China women renew a rivalry. Actually, no, that, that's not right. Uh, we got a, but we got France and USA women. That will be a nice matchup to keep an eye on. And Poland and, and Latvia renew their rivalry. That's on the schedule tomorrow. Ah, let's all take a breath. Wow. Good work. Uh, good work, everybody. And thank you for watching if you're still here. But that's it. I'm done talking.
The Creelin FIBA 3x3 World Cup continues tomorrow with our last day of pool play. Pools B and C are underway. 11 a.m. tomorrow. We'll see you then. I'm The Voice. Peace out.